okay this is going to be about arrays so an array is like a a variable sort of but it holds multiple pieces of data so it's it kind of holds multiple variables but so it has different multiple slots so it holds multiple pieces of the same data type so to make an array use the word dim so dim and then give it a name my r now to say that it's an array use a parentheses here so like that and I'm not going to put anything in there yet because there's two ways of inputting data into an array so I'm going to do as data type. I'm going to do integer just for example now um, so if you want to store some data in it you put equals then do curly braces now this is one way of inputting data now this is if you know everything that's in it or most of it or just it's a nice way of doing it. There's two ways. You can you can pick which one you want to use afterwards. Um so three, five, seven, nine. So I'm gonna store four pieces of data. And I'm gonna say just show you three is in position zero, five is in position one, seven is in position two, and then nine is in position three. Now this is array of length four, but it goes from positions zero to three. So remember that. So I'm gonna put console dot right line um my er uh, um position zero um so this is gonna sit display three because we're saying position um zero in the array now arrays are important because they're a vital part of programming and especially when doing algorithms so if you want to know why you're doing learning about arrays that's why and they're generally important for everything uh, like even a string is an array of characters um, so one thing you should know is when you're talking about arrays if you're referencing the position or you're declaring it then you want to use parentheses if you're just referencing the array as one just general object then you don't use it so there is a function which returns the length of the string so dot length which is quite useful to know so this says 4 so this is of length 4 but it goes from position 0 to 3 so remember that um, so that's one way of doing it uh, the other way is the same way in which we've read it and first of all I want to say if you don't want to do it on the same line that method you can put my r is equal to curly braces 3, 5, 7, 9 like that and that works just the same but anyway now we've shown you the way the other way you can do it so you say 0 is equal to 3 it's, it's really simple but the only difference is if you are not using this way so this way d says the array boundaries just because it can count but it doesn't know how long this is going to go on if you do it this way so you've got to say the array boundaries so I'm going to do 0 to 4 as an example so this is, going to, this is an array of length 5 based on position 0 to 4 so um, you don't have to put 0 to 4 you can just put 4 I'm just saying you can put 0 to 4 if you want it's just it's nicer to learn it that way but no you can just put 4 and one thing you should know is you can't have an array with a lower bound of 1 it doesn't like that uh, so arrays always count from 0 like general computing like general computers do so that works fine that will say nothing because I put it here uh, my our position 0 is 3 um, so I'm going to show you two ways in which you can go through arrays now the easiest way to read an array is with a for each loop. So for each item in my uh, remember you don't need to read parentheses because you're referencing the array as a as a general whole thing, not a specific position. So in here you can say console dot write line uh item. And I'm just gonna uh, comment this out here. So this is gonna say five zeros, yeah. Um, so that's it. You can't use this to store information. So I'm going to show you the for the method of doing a for loop, which stores it as well as reads it, um, but it's slightly more tedious to do. So I'm going to do a for loop for i to zero to now four because that's the array boundary, and then like that. So then you can say console dot write line my r 
position i because i is going to get incremented and go through every position in the array. So that's basically the same as the for each loop. Now that works the same, but the difference is now you can um, store it. So if I get rid of this, get rid of this, and say is equal to console dot read line like so, then that's going to store five numbers. So one, two, three, five, seven, nine. And you can see that works fine like that. Um, so that's how you're going to do it if you want to store things. So one thing is if you don't know what this number here is, you can do that function I've told you about earlier, my error dot length. Now this is going to be equal to five because it has got zero to four. That's length of five. So you want to do minus one. And again, you want to do it here, but I'm not going to show you again. Um, so that's that. So I'm going to leave the writing one there. So, what if you want to extend the array boundaries after you've declared it? So, you want to say position 5 is equal to 3. Now, it's not going to like that. Well, it won't when it runs. It'll say index outside the bounds array. Um, so, what you can do is use the redim keyword. So, redim. So, I've got a caps lock on. Uh, yeah. And then you say my array. Now you're going to use the parentheses here because you are referencing if, uh, like you're changing the array boundaries. So that's the other exception when it's needed. So if you say six now, that means zero to six. Um, so now this will be allowed. And then you can see three is shown there at position um, five, but it's the six num six number. If that makes sense. Um, but let's say if you do my array position 3 is equal to 99 when we do this it's going to wipe out so this is position 0, 1, 2, 3 so here it should be 99 but it's gone because we've used this and it's wiped the array if you don't want to wipe the original contents then you do preserve and then that will keep the original contents and see 99 is there now so that's all you need to know about the redim and preserve keyword. Okay, now I'm going to be talking about multi-dimensional arrays. So, I can I'll leave that anyway. Um, so, again, there's two ways of doing this. So, I'm going to put a comma here. So, and it's not used, that's why it's erroring. So, say equals, and then you use double curly braces. Now, this may seem a bit confusing, but I'll explain it. So, I'm going to say one, two, three and then I say 4, why not, and then comma, and then another curly brace, 6, comma, 7, 8, comma, 9, then double curly brace, close. So that works fine. So what this is going to do, and now the best way of sh you learning this is for me not to use a loop, because then you can see how I've done it. So I'm going to pause the video here until I've wrote out this, I will copy and paste it, um, but yeah. Okay, so this is the order in which these are stored. So let me do a double comment. Uh, so this is bracket zero. So this is kind of row zero. Um, and you don't want to get too hung up on the array boundary terms. I'm going to say rows and columns just because it's easier to visualize. But think of it as dimension one, dimension two, dimension three, dimension four, because then, and you can go to infinite, well, a certain amount at least, um, amount of dimensions. So this is zero, this is row zero, um, so I'm going to put, I guess, row, and then uh, column, and then, so here will be uh, zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two three so I'm just going to delete that and then you can see this is row zero column one uh, row yeah it does like the columns first if that makes sense so if you look here you'll see the results so it will display it in the order which I've declared it if you do it like this if you increment the second number first then it will display it in the right order so that's how that works now if you want to use this I recommend not using a um, for each loop because it will just go through and display the numbers and you won't have very much control over what goes what um, so 
Now I'm going to do a nested for loop to cycle through both um, dimensions. So for i is equal to 0 to the first bit and it goes from 0 to 1 so 0 to 1. Then inside this you can do 4j, you can't use i because you've already used it, uh, equals 0 to and then there's, it goes up to 3. 0 to 3 then you would say console dot right line um, my r position i comma j and that should work hopefully <laughs> so there we are that's gone through each position and then you can also read in contents like that um, a little bit of help for you a couple of things you should know um, is let's do I'll use this. You can say my array dot um, rank. Now this tells you the number of dimensions within the array is 2D array. If you wish to make a 3D array, you put a comment there, another comma, and this needs to change. You need to put three curly braces and then this statement again, sort of thing. You can hopefully work that out for yourself. Uh, I'm not going to go through that, the video is already too long. So this tells you the amount of dimensions. quick other thing I'll show you is the fact that a string um, is also an array, so equal to hello. So if I now say console.writeline a position Three, that should return this L. I probably shouldn't do L. I'll put L O with uh, just one L. And then, so this is said this character here. So this is a string of length four, but that's more about strings. But it, a string is an array of characters. So just remember that.